Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Grant, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about what I would love to see in a new Micro Four Thirds camera from my good friends at Panasonic, okay? Um, you know, they've just released the S5 Mark II. That's a full frame. Um, you know, they released a Micro Four Thirds camera last year in the GH6 Mark II, um, but you know, realistically, we all knew that was gonna come at some stage. GH5, GH5 Mark II, those cameras have a cult following the GH6 had to come at some point, right? Um, but yeah, what I would like to see in a new Micro Four Thirds camera, right? So um, let's roll that intro and let's get straight into it. So yeah, um, this is what I would like to see, seven or so points ideas, concepts, if you will, um, that I would love to see in a new Panasonic Micro Four Thirds camera, okay? So, um, you know, we saw the release of the S5 Mark II, as I mentioned before in the intro, that's all well and good, but there has to be some kind of Micro Four Thirds camera coming from Panasonic soon, right? I don't know what it's gonna be, but you know, maybe it might not be anything, maybe that's it, they might not be doing it, but you know, they seem to be releasing uh, more and more lenses. You know, they've just released the Panasonic Leica 12 to 35 f 2.8 lens. So surely, you know, they're still in development of a potential new camera. So I've got seven or so points that I'm gonna go into. Um, you know, for me, um, you know, I use the Panasonic Lumix G9 for a lot of my work, both professionally and in my personal work too. And it's a great camera. Uh, with the lead on of the GH6 Mark II, uh, sorry, the GH6 Mark II, I should say, just say the GH6, that was a great camera. And essentially, if you put face detection autofocus in that camera, that would be a great DSLR style ish sort of camera, right? So for me, this in lies the first point. What I would like to see is some kind of retro styling. Um, you know, small uh, viewfinder looking style camera from Panasonic Lumix. This was the last one, the GX9, and this was re released years ago. I think they're due for a new one, okay? Interchangeable lens system, we're gonna stick with that. We're not gonna put a, fo a fixed lens on it. But my thoughts of this is, and the rest of the points are gonna follow in, uh, you know, along with this retro styling sort of camera. Um, you know, what I would like to see from Panasonic um, is, you know, we, we got to take note and see all the hype and the massive fuss around the Fujifilm X, uh, X100V. That camera has just gone through the roof for no real particular reason other than hipsters on TikTok, okay? Um, but, you know, if Panasonic could capitalize on that sort of area and you know you know the the trend and people loving this sort of smallish retro style camera i think they could be onto a winner um you know the g uh, the gx9 is the closest thing they've had to it but for me number one it would be some sort of um retro style ish camera not too retro not like what nikon released with that retro-ish camera, I don't even know what the name of it is, um, you know, where it looks real old school and stuff like that. We don't want to go too old school. Maybe, you know, if, for example, maybe the Pen F, that was a good sort of middle ground. It sort of looked modern, but it had a lot of retro vibes to it. Much like, you know, the GX9, the G85, that series of cameras, the GX8, had that retro sort of uh, range finder look in a Micro Four Thirds camera. It's not a range finder, I'm aware of that but that style and feel of camera. That's what I would like to see in a new release from Panasonic. Let's get into point number two. Okay, point number two is the controls and the layout in this sort of rangefinder-ish style of camera. For me, um, let's just talk about the size factor just real quickly first before we get onto dials and controls and stuff and what I would like to see. Um, Having used the GX8 for many years before I sold that on, um, that was a great camera. I'm feeling it was a touch bigger than this GX9. I'm feeling like going back to that sort of size point, maybe not with the bigger extended grip that the GX8 had. I feel as though that grip was a little bit too big and you know, 
it sort of took away from that sort of rangefinder, stealthy sort of uh, street style camera, right? So if they bulked it up a little bit to maybe that size with that style of battery as well, that would be great. But when it comes to dials, much the same really. I'm not talking Fuji style like clickable retro dials or anything like that. But a good firm back dial is always important. A good firm front dial, you know, aperture, uh, sorry, shutter on the back, aperture on the front. And then for me, what would be great would be um, getting rid of the D-pad on the back for a scrolling dial. Why I like that, because that's on my G9 and my GH5 Mark II, okay? And I map the back of this, you know, this dial here to my ISO. So having the dial on the back of like a sort of a camera like the GX9-ish sort of thing, that means you've got the exposure triangle right underneath your fingers. You can control your aperture at the front, you got your shutter at the back, and then you can dial in your ISO too. And having more things like more, um, uh, you know, custom buttons to program sort of, you know, your own custom, essentially make the camera 100% your own sort of camera, okay? So that's another thing. It's, it's really sort of like the controls, front and back dials, um, scroll wheel at the back would be great. Definitely keep the uh, exposure compensation uh, dial for all the aperture and shutter priority people out there. I think that's a must to keep that in there. The GX8 had that as well, and it was really, really handy. But yeah, that's number two. The controls, you know, don't take any of the dials away. Add dials in. Back rear dial, okay? Let's get into number three. Okay, uh, number three, the third thing I'd like to see in a new sort of retro styling sort of micro four thirds camera, along with the dials, and I briefly mentioned more custom buttons, you know, to make the, the camera more customizable. Um, on the GX9, the uh, AFAE button at the back is really embedded inside it. So for all of us back button focus people, you know, it's a bit tricky to do back button, back button focusing. Back button focusing. If I can get the words out, that would be great. Um, having a real solid you know, AF, uh, AE button at the back, so I could set it to my back button focusing, that would be fantastic. And this is not a real big point. I guess it comes back to sort of dial, uh, dials and controls and stuff like that. Adding more in, making things a little bit more bulky so it's not as sort of fiddly and stuff, and more custom buttons. So I guess those two last points sort of are the same sort of thing, right? So um, let's quickly get into uh, reason number four, or not reason. Um, the fourth thing I would like to see in a Micro Four Thirds camera. Micro Four Thirds, I would like to see that GH6 sensor, that um, 25 megapixel, is it? Sensor in some sort of camera like this. The more megapixels, the better. It's gonna give us a better shooting experience, more files, more room to edit in post. Uh, for all of us street photographers that need a little bit of room and stuff like that, even for all of us JPEG shooters that are straight out of camera, the more megapixels, the better. Compression, all that sort of stuff. We would love to see, let's move on from the 20 megapixel thing and let's get to that 25 megapixel sensor within this sort of retro style rangefinder-ish camera, right? So that's a, that's a quick one. That's, that's pretty much a given. I think everyone here would like to see that 25 mil, uh, megapixel sensor in a new Micro Four Thirds camera. Let's get into uh, number five. Okay, the fifth thing I would love to see in, um, you know, a new Micro Four Thirds camera would be, uh, you know, more um, picture profiles, uh, maybe even some film, film simulations. Surely Panasonic and Leica and all that sort of stuff I did hear actually, and this is a side note, that Leica and Panasonic were going to have more of a collaboration. Or this is just what I think I've heard. Maybe I've dreamt it, <laughs> but what I've heard is is they're going to have more of a collaboration in the future, and that would be awesome. So, you know, for me, you know, Fujifilm obviously are the leader of all those film simulations. People love them. Um, a lot of my friends use them, and they're great. They look really, really good. More of that sort of stuff in here. Now, with the S5 Mark II, they've got that new real-time LUT thing where you can import LUTs into the camera and you can put them on your JPEGs and you can put them on your film footage as well. 
Let's bring that tech over here so we can get some really cool in-camera JPEGs, customizable, all that sort of stuff within this new retro funky camera, right? Let's kill that X100V. Let's move on, that was number five. Let's get on to my five, oh no, I've got two more. Number six. Okay, number six. We definitely wanna keep the flip up screen, okay? This style of thing right here. We don't wanna be going back on this sort of style of camera, in my opinion, this is what I would like to see. I keep saying we. However, me, myself, I don't wanna see this sort of thing. The GX8 had this sort of thing, you know, meh. On this particular sort of G9, GH5, GH5 Mark II, GH6, yeah, definitely, I, I definitely get it. This is where it's at. More video centric, right? But I'm sort of thinking more photography centric with this sort of stuff. I should have made that clearer earlier in the video. However, uh, let's get, let's keep that flip up screen happening, right? It's great for us street photographers, candid photography, family photography. The other good thing is, is you're not looking out to the side, you're keeping your compositions down, right down the middle. It's easy to shoot from the hip. Let's even move this screen so it flips all the way up for all the vloggers out there and people that wanna take selfies too. Keeping this sort of style set up, I think is really important and will go a long way, okay? So that's number six. Let's get to my final point and the final one is a little bit uh, ooh, edgy, okay? So let's get into it, number seven. Okay, number seven, and this is controversial. Okay, I think it's controversial. Let's either get a bigger EVF, the GX9 EVF is, you know, something to be desired. It flips up, oh wow, that's all well and good, but it's uh, as small as anything, okay? It's hard to use, I actually don't use it a lot. So let's bring back maybe, you know, the GX8 had a good EVF, I found. I don't remember what the resolution was, but more it's more so the size of it, okay? So let's bring back some sort of decent size EVF on this retro stylish Micro Four Thirds camera. Or do we ditch it completely and just have the LCD on the back, the screen on the back? And is that what we use to make all of our compositions and how we shoot uh, this particular new camera. Let me know what you think. Much like, um, what cameras are they? The uh, the, the Ryko um, series cameras, you know, those little tiny compact point and shoot cameras, the APS-C sensors in them. Should we do something like that? Get rid of the EVF completely and just rely on the back screen? I don't know. I think that definitely wouldn't be a deal breaker for me if they had this sort of style of thing and just had the, the back, uh, you know, LCD screen to do all your compositions and stuff like that. Most of the time in this style of camera, you're doing that, but then I guess daylight shooters, video shooters, if it's really bright and things like that, you know, this is where this eyepiece comes into play. So that one, mm, don't know, let me know what you think about that down in the comments. But yeah, for me, that's what I would like to see in a new Micro Four Thirds camera. Um, you know, essentially we've got a G9, G9 Mark II maybe, that's all well and good, but you know, really all they gotta do is put that new awesome autofocus in a GH6 Mark II, and this style of camera has already been done, okay? It's been done a million times. GH6 has sort of taken that realm, and they should have put that new funky awesome autofocus in it, and that would have been done. For me, I'm really thinking some sort of retro stylish style of camera, right? Let me know what you think. If you like this sort of stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel. This is a real sort of like slap together video, but you know, I'm seeing a little bit of hype in the camera world around micro four thirds and what's gonna come next and yada, yada, yada. I'm sick of hearing about the X100V all the time. Uh, maybe the algorithm's just making me sick of it in my YouTube, uh, you know, scroll thing. However, um, you know, Panasonic has, I feel as though, has a good chance, you know, if they were to get something like this happening with that new sensor to really take on Fuji, if they put that real-time techno technology into this, or even, you know, Panasonic's own sort of uh, film, you know, simulations. Here's another quick one. I know this video is dragging on a bit. Here's another quick one. If they released something like this rangefinder style thing with a full frame sensor panasonic leica collaboration maybe so we're getting a cheaper essential leica camera maybe 
with that Lumix branding on it. Retro styling, full frame sensor, much like the Leica cameras that you know people love and they are awesome. I know this is going off you know, the topic of Micro Four Thirds and what we wanna see in a new Micro Four Thirds camera. But however, um, yeah man, how cool would that be? That new S5 Mark II sensor in something like this Ooh, and at a good price and with film simulations and all that sort of stuff, goodbye X100V, that's gonna be the new X100V, let me tell you right now. Anyway, I've gone on too long. I'll see you all next time.